supposed to have religious freedom. If Muslims are welcome here, Hindus are welcome here, Christians are welcome to us against our atheists. We're all welcome. <laughs> so now that we're good and warmed up, can you guys all introduce yourself and where we know you guys from? My name's Brittany Ashley. You probably know me uh, from a little thing called the internet. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A writer. I'm a writer. Hi, I'm Jen Richards. I'm a writer, actor. Probably been on a screen near you at some point in the last year. Uh, I'm Fuzzy Mirza. I am an actor and a writer and a brown lady. My name is Robin Exton. I'm the CEO and founder of Her, and we are a company that helps lesbian, bisexual, and queer people meet each other. I owe you my single life. No, yeah. <laughs> this is an ad for Her social media app. Woohoo! <laughs> Download it too. Um, I was just thinking about who was it? Tina Fey. Who was the person? Who was the comic who said that if men, like if men could get pregnant, you could get an abortion at an ATM? Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Julia, in Julia Louis Dreyfus. In the, that is, I can't help thinking about that. Often. I think about that line often. almost constantly. If men got pregnant, you could get an abortion at an ATM. Let's state the obvious. Well, especially yeah. with that image recently of Trump with like six other men yeah. signing. Yeah, oh, like, right. Like, oh. That was the worst. So, like, <laughs> it's phenomenal, isn't it? It's like when it actually. You just imagine this scenario if it was you, and you're like, how on earth did these people get to make this decision when it, you have no experience of it, you have no idea about it, no. you're sat in your big fat chair, uh -huh. like, um, making these decisions on our behalf without even consulting, like, who got in on this? Like, I think um, it's also frustrating that women are, like, cool with it. Yeah. Like, there are women that are yeah, just yeah. like, what's wrong? What? Yeah. It's like, yeah. men what's best. wrong with us? Especially right. Right. straight yes. white men with money, like, they know best. Right. I mean, we're right. I mean, it's a, you know, we, we've got, like, a 2,500-year-old tradition that yeah. says, like, yeah. who knows best, and we defer to that. Yep. And it is. It's part of that conditioning where it's almost like, and I, I feel like I, I believed that as well until I started working in sexual violence prevention, and then I realized, oh, my God, I've been brainwashed. Yeah. Like, I can say no. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't know that. I yeah. really didn't. I didn't yeah. know that was a thing, and I felt a lot of guilt yeah. and shame around everything surrounding being a woman, yeah. whether it was sex or just body functions or having a body. Having an existing, <laughs> basically. Existing, you know, having sexual... That's anything other than, than an object of right. consumption. Exactly. And so that really broke down a lot of all of these ideas that I had in my head, and then I realized, well, there are a lot of people who just believe that and will mm -hmm. never... Get never past that. Awoken. Yeah. Never, they'll or never they, be woke. Or they they'll are, never but be that's woke. That's what they believe. <laughs> yeah, they're like it's probably way harder. Yes. To if you're in a community where that's where, what everyone believes, it's probably so hard to be that pariah. Even if you believe it personally, it's probably just way easier to just go along. Well, and that's that. why I'm a little sympathetic to that because I'm from the South and right. I, I know a lot of women like that. I mean, yeah. I find myself slipping into it when I'm down South. Like, I start cooking more and cleaning more and, you know, getting food ready for the men and, like, mm -hmm. cleaning up after them. You just, you kind of, you can't help but fall into these roles. Right. And when it's the glue that holds your structure together, it's really easy to fall into those. Mm -hmm. And it's not that, like, women down there you know don't think for themselves and right they, but a lot of it is kind of kept private mm -hmm. you know right like you don't air dirty laundry exactly yeah I don't talk yeah. about that I mean and I would say that I th I mean being Muslim I mean that's sort of just part of our like community culture where this is the role of the woman or this is the role of the man but but it is fascinating like to sort of try to break out of that and it's like why are you why do you have short hair <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, it's fascinating. You go to other countries sometimes, and it's like people will stare at you just because of your hair. It's like that's not what a woman looks like. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, well, hi, I'm right here. <laughs> I have these and these. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I do not. look like this. Okay. So I, yeah, this and is I real. do look it's like really this. Happening. This is possible. I'm yeah. not a hologram. <laughs> oh. So we want to talk a little bit about the Muslim ban, and we want to get, you know, as a Muslim woman, jewelry. How how <laughs> how did that I mean, I can't imagine how that made you feel. Like, can you talk <coughs> about, like, you know, then and now and... and so, I guess... Uh, my I think she was asking Robin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Go <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> on. Um, well, you know, so it's been really fascinating to think about the way that this administration or Donald Trump or the government thinks about Muslims right now. Because for me, it was not just post November 8th or post the executive orders coming up. He, the day he started talking about Muslims in 
you know, his speeches or during the election. And it was in December of 2015, it was the first time he started talking about banning Muslims. And, you know, it was right around the same time he started talking about building a wall, again for, you know, a border wall with Mexico. And that was when I started taking it seriously. And, and that was also the time that I, I, I did the character Aisha Trump, because I was like, wait a minute, this might seem funny because it's not possible, but this is possible, and this is unacceptable. Like, even saying this and hearing this come out of a candidate's mouth is not funny, because it's possible. And <laughs> so it's the sort of thing where we know, I guess as a community, I, I, don't, I don't ever think that I speak for all Muslims, because I definitely do not. But I think it's one of the things that we have been preparing for. Mm -hmm. That this is, you know, we've been sort of a target post 9-11 for sure. Even pre-9-11, we've been, we've been sort of secretly targets. Mm -hmm. um, but when the ban came out, it was like, okay, I'm Pakistani. I was shocked. I was like, why aren't we included? Um, and so then you also start to look at the fact that what is this really? What is this about? It's not against just us. This is all part of this greater Trumpian game of control, and not just controlling the left or controlling liberals. It's about controlling the people who vote for him and who like him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it is controlling them by saying, see, yeah. look what I can do, and look what I did. Yeah. I kept my promise. That being said, one of the most quote unquote, quote, you know, least democratic Muslim countries is not on the list, Saudi Arabia. Pakistan, who, you know, a lot of the right seem to hate, not on the list. I had Pakistan in the first round, so right? I, I lost my whole fantasy. Yeah, right, yeah. 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 your fantasy Muslim, Muslim band. Yeah. 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 Right? I mean, I don't know who won, but, but you know, I think the, I think, it, I don't know if there's a single person from who is from any of the seven countries that are banned um, who has perpetrated a crime on Muslim soil Zero. since 9 11. Zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what is that doing? What is this really about? And so, we're sort of looking at it as this it is a chess game. I mean, although I don't know if Donald Trump is actually smart enough to play chess. And I, I'm not even. Right. So. No one is, right? <laughs> yeah. Muslims are. We invented chess. We did invent, we, I don't know about chess, but we invented numbers. Okay. <laughs> As in like the actual one to Zero, ten, one, seven. two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the concept of zero. And the concept oh, of So actually, if we're going to ban Muslims, we should ban zeros. <laughs> <laughs> all, z all, all, all zeros. Trump's a zero. He's out. He's out. Get out. <laughs> and there goes computers because binary numbers. Mm. Right. We should ban a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> but what I do find, uh, you know, going back to sort of the, the women's march and, and as the executive orders are being signed in it, as people are showing up, I feel very much that this is about all of us. And so that feels really good. Um, I do wonder where all of us were before. And I, I'll, I'm very honestly, also I look at people who, pre the election and pre the Muslim bans, when we would speak out and say, look, who are you voting for? Are you voting? Are you writing in Harambe? Are you voting third party? What are you doing? And people would not take that seriously. Liberals were not taking that seriously. And now they're the, the ones to sort of show up and protest. I'm like, you know what? That's awesome that you're doing this now. But where the f fuck were you when we asked you to stop dividing our community mm. pre-election? So that's something to think about um, a lot about. Um, people thought it just didn't exist. Like, I made <coughs> a film and people were like, oh, well, the gays don't have to fight for anything anymore. And I think right. if people, if they're not if it's not in their space, they just think it doesn't exist. So what's this done is it's brought it to the foreground where they can't say it doesn't exist any longer. Yeah. It's like well, the fat has risen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or the scum has risen. The scum has risen. <laughs> no, and also, we need to change the sense of, like, us. You know, because yes. in all of this conversation, there's a sense of, like, well, like, we need to protect ourselves. Like, okay, but, like, who is the yeah. our in that? Yes. Because it assumes you know, well, we're all Christian and there's something else. Like, we're all straight and there's something else. Mm -hmm. So we have to expand that sense. We are all yeah. straight and Christian. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, thank God. Yeah. And, and, and until there are people, until we actually, like, you know, have friendships and community and projects across mm -hmm. difference, yeah. it's really easy to fall into that, you know? Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. I mean, it's, I mean, there's some very famous gay man who has a 
who's like very famously a Trump supporter. Yeah, Mima. Peter Mima. Oh, yes. Mario Nobles or yes. Peter Thiel. Yeah. yeah, and that <laughs> might be like this one glaring example of somebody who's very public. But I have been around plenty of white gay men, maybe in particular, but also women, um, who just, they ask the same questions that the right, the non-liberals ask, yeah. you know, the non-gay people ask. And it feels the same way, you know. They may, they maybe maybe there's sometimes there, there, there there's a lack of education. There's a lack of us. Right. Um, well, I mean, the thing that brought together the LGBT community was gay marriage, and the whole kind of premise was we're just yeah. like you. Yeah. All we want to we just want to be just like you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's but now we're suffering because of that <laughs> yeah. because the just like you part was really only for you know partnered middle class white people yeah. and now they're now they are indistinguishable from the rest of the population all the rest of us are kind of like well we're still screwed yeah. right. you know and that's like why the whole note like i kind of love that it's becoming more about queer yeah. now it's like yeah. queer politics this is queer resistance yeah yeah it brings more people in. we're not just like you but it doesn't mean that we don't have equal rights yeah mm -hmm. i think like pride this year will be really interesting because i think already oh, yeah. as they're being lined up there's so much more activism happening and yeah. when you work with the people who put on pride and uh, who put on dyke march like they have this real struggle of trying to or had previously had this issue of keeping it a political event because it was it was about sponsors and yeah, partying and exactly. everyone drinking and like celebrating more than actually like doing the activism and it was like none of us there wasn't that same uh, like a uh, fight that was happening that should have been happening at those things still because a lot of people in big cities things were getting better like mm -hmm. they were pretty all right and mm -hmm. uh, there for, was one for, fight for marriage for some very people. small <laughs> yeah. Yeah. exactly and yeah. that's and so so, but then they were people who were also involved in the organization of it sometimes exactly. and so that didn't it they couldn't work out how to like rally people to be like uh, to be having a fight to be saying something and i think this year will actually be the first time in like maybe 10 years where it gets really quite political again and there'll be a lot more like a uh, fight behind it which i think is a really good thing that i think is needed i think we, if we yeah. could just swap out all of the gay white men in every LGBT organization <laughs> with queer women of color. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would be so happy. Like, that would solve like so many problems. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where the Muslim community feels that we've sort of been like, hey, you guys, we're safe. We're safe. We're not, we're not all terrorists. And now I think it's time to pivot and say, you know what, we will not be silenced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a sort of a next level, I think, argument and next level movement for, for the community. Imagine if every minority banded together would yes. be a hell of a lot more. We'd be powerful. the majority. Yeah. Yes. If every minority banded yes. together. We'd be the majority. <laughs> That's my goal. Yes. <laughs> Viva la resistance. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> We currently have zero minutes left for this episode, so we're going to have to end here. Rocco, you know what to do. Check us out next time on Nasty Women Talk Back. 